Welcome, welcome. Your audio should be working now. I see the chat. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hi, welcome. Mara, hello, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Dana Merwin. I'm the program officer at the International Documentary Association. Today, I'm greeting you from the ancestral lands of the Chumash and Tongva people, also known as Los Angeles, California. Before we begin, there's some few uh, housekeeping technical things we wanna address. Um, I wanna acknowledge and thank our ASL interpreter, Mara, who's sharing the screen with me. Thank you, Mara. And also we have closed captioning available and that is being done by our colleague, Tina. So thank you, Tina. A word on the captioning, if you need to utilize it, cart captioning, click on the CC button at the bottom of the screen to turn that on. Uh, we also have dropped into the chat a link to the live transcript. If you are unable to stay for the entire session, ah, it's okay. Uh, we want to share it in the future and we will be putting this recording on IDA's YouTube channel. So we will email you a link when that is posted in the coming weeks or days. I am not alone in this effort today. My fellow IDA staff is off screen supporting us. Uh, I want to acknowledge Nikki, Leanne, Cassidy, and Kenny. You may see some of them in the chat today. Uh, during this session, we will also be joined with some filmmakers and we will be talking with them and we will be accepting questions from you. So also, Check out this Zoom screen on the bottom. There's a little Q&A bubble, little dialogue there, square. That's where you're gonna put your questions, not in the chat, but in the little Q&A bubble. So stare into the squares, welcome back. <laughs> and I think that's all my housekeeping details. Um, so without further ado, why are we here? That's a very big existential question. Today, uh, we are gonna be discussing grant writing. So if you don't want to be in the grant writing webinar, uh, this is your chance to leave. I always, do you remember when we used to fly and people would say, this, this plane is going to San Diego if you don't wanna go to San Diego. And I just always wondered how those people ended up on the plane. So if, you, if you're not supposed to be here, <laughs> please, this is a chance to go make coffee. Um, no, so why are we here? Uh, grant writing. Uh, it is a doozy of a topic. Uh, why am I here? Well, uh, all those answers in the long and short would be because of IDA. And, and I want to share a, a slide. This is when we get interactive so you don't see me the whole time. Um, we were brought here today because IDA, the International Documentary Association, is share screen. I'm so excited to share the screen. Okay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> what is IDA? If you found this uh, webinar, but you don't know who IDA, this is the small moment where I tell you. <laughs> the International Documentary Association is a member supported organization. Uh, for nearly 40 years, we have been supporting nonfiction filmmakers and uh, through educational resources, advocacy, and funding. That includes our fiscal sponsorship program. And more recently, these two exciting documentary funds, the Enterprise Documentary Fund and the Para Lorenz Documentary Fund, and hopefully more to come as we continue to support filmmakers through grants. So does that make me an expert? Uh, no, <laughs> but in terms of the funding at IDA, we've seen quite a bit of applications and we wanted to do a service to the community to help them. Uh, hopefully 
write stronger applications, but also meet other filmmakers who have been awarded funds through the IDA. Um, so that is why we're here. Uh, also historically, the IDA um, helped in the creation of the documentary core application. If you've ever applied to a grant, you've probably heard, uh, at least through the documentary field, you've heard of the documentary core application. Uh, IDA, along with our partners at Sundance and other funders back in 2015, helped create this document in an effort, in an effort <laughs> to make the grant writing process easier for filmmakers. Now, what happened over the past few years is the field changed and questions that filmmakers had and funders had were evolving. And I wanna acknowledge that uh, we are now revisiting the core. Uh, in the next uh, few months in meetings and convenings with fellow funders and filmmakers, uh, we are gonna try to make the core standard again. We realized over the past few years that it is no longer that way, that different funders have kind of gone uh, different ways and created different questions. IDA, uh, we have also done that in an effort to address questions on authorship and COVID. Uh, so we are gonna try to unite the field this year and, and relaunch, relaunch the core again. So uh, stand by for that in the coming months. Uh, now, the one thing I wanna, before I get to uh, introducing our filmmakers today, um, we are going to cover not only grant writing, but really, oh, hi, let's actually, let's, yeah, let's stop sharing. Let's go back to the squares, Mara. <laughs> so that's who we are and why we're here. Um, and now I'm not alone in this, which is kind of the theme. You're not alone in this, even though grant writing often feels very isolating. Uh, today I'm honored to welcome two of our uh, grantees with IDA. And uh, let me introduce them. Mina Nanji. Mina is a filmmaker of South Asian heritage, born in Kenya. She co-founded Global Girl Media, a nonprofit that trains girls from underrepresented communities of the world in media and journalism. Her work focuses on social justice issues, gender race representation, and has been broadcast on PBS, Al Jazeera, NDTV, and others. Welcome, Mina. Hi, Mina. Also joining us is Zippy Kamundu. Zippy is an award-winning Kenyan filmmaker who has been working in the global industry for nearly a decade as a director and editor. Zippy continues to work independently in both film and TV, and recently founded an international collective of film professionals with an aim of encouraging international co-productions and telling unique stories across Africa. Please welcome Zippy. Hello to you both. If you wanna unmute, we'll welcome you in. Hi, it's so great to see both of you. Great to be here, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, so Mina and Zippy are the directors and producers of a film we supported called Testament. And through their film today, we're going to really address the grant writing process for them uh, and also maybe slip in some uh, tips and techniques that not only they've learned in their uh, careers as, as filmmakers, um, but as a funder, I can also kind of interject some of the things that really really stood out, not only for their application, but um, things that will help you navigate uh, your own application. So no film or no project is similar. So just hopefully you will take some of these things today and apply them to your own process, okay? Um, so Testament, what is Testament? What is the film? Uh, you know, I, I'm framing this conversation uh, in parallel with the documentary core application. Uh, because we're going to share excerpts from your original uh, application, which very few filmmakers get to see other filmmakers' applications, the writing style, the story style. So this in itself, thank you for sharing, because writing is such a vulnerable, personal thing. So I want to acknowledge that across the board and also talking about money. 
for better or worse, is a very vulnerable thing. We were each raised to think about money in different ways. Collectively, it's a huge issue in our field. So I also thank you for being vulnerable and sharing um, about the film, which is still in production and is still raising funds. So acknowledging all of those things. Uh, so if you haven't heard of Testament, we're going to drop a link into the chat uh, that will um, kind of share the bios uh, and more about the film. All of that being said, I wanted to revisit your application and your original logline for folks to really meet the project, because this is how I met it as, as a reviewer. This is the first thing I saw. So I'm going to share my screen again. And would you mind, um, I'm gonna call on Mina first. Mina, would you mind reading your log line? I'm skipping over some slides. Um, oh, but this one's beautiful. So I wanna share this one. This is from the film. Okay. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, <laughs> My voice, of course. Um, so our logline is a Kenyan woman's search for her father's remains becomes an investigation into colonial atrocities and a fight for justice for thousands of Kenya's landless. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we could do a whole grant writing seminar on writing log lines. Um, you're shaking yeah. your head. You know, the who, what, when, where, why. That's a lot to pack into one to two lines. Um, I think it's a great example of, of what the film uh, is. Um, my first question uh, is, uh, Mina, how did you come to this project and, and how did your collaboration um, come with Zippy? Uh, well, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a long story, but I'll try and make it short. Um, I, so I was born in Kenya, um, left when I was very young. I was about nine years old when I left, but I'd always... I don't know, my formative years were just, were just really, really powerful. And um, I had a deep, deep, deep connection um, to the land actually. Um, um, and I've all, I'd always been really interested in like how Kenya got its independence. Um, you know, left for a very long time, fast forward to like 2011. And um, I read a book by a, a, a Harvard professor, Caroline Elkins, who wrote about British concentration camps in Kenya. And it just blew my mind. I'd never heard of them, you know, never heard of them, um, never realized the extent of kind of what the British um, did in Kenya in, in, in you know, uh, apart from, <clears throat> we always heard, oh, they built schools and railroads and hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, but this whole whole other side of torture and repression and all, you know, all of that, I'd never heard of. And so um, was really looking for a way to go back and make a film about it. Fast forward to 2015 and um, um, a friend, Laura Nix, actually, the, the, the great director, um, um, I, she had just done a workshop in Kenya and I contacted her looking for, you know, to ask her who I should meet in the filmmaking community, which was just starting to really emerge at that time with the founding of DocuBox. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the people she mentioned was Zippy. And um, I had already met um, the woman who was going to become our main character, though I didn't know she was our main character at that point. Um, but she had arranged for an interview with her mother, who her mother was a was a freedom fighter and the wife of the independent movement's leader who was who was killed, who was executed by the British. But she was the wife of the great Dead and Kimathi, you know, it was like, oh, my God, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I had Zippy's number on my, you know, list, called her up. Um, you know, we hadn't met. I just said, Zippy, I've got to do this. We've got an interview tomorrow. Um, can we, can we, will you, will you do it with me? <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> yes. I'll leave the rest of the story to Zippy. <laughs> yeah, Zippy, what, what was, you know, what, what kept this just from being, oh, here's, um, uh, I don't know, at the time you were living in the States, Mina, is this? Yeah, you living I, in I was living in LA, right. Exactly. So yeah. what goes through your head other than, oh, here's this, you know, maybe US person coming in, we're going to do an interview and then she'll probably yeah. leave. Yeah, where does it, yeah, what, what goes into exactly. the team? Yeah. 
for me, yeah. So how, okay. So I had actually been like researching uh, for, to do a fiction film on the same subject, right? So I just got rights to Mugiwa Thiongo's book, We With No Child. And I'd really been right because in film school, you're told, you know, you need to write a story that you know, like, you know, from the story that you know. And so I was like, okay, so this is a fiction film that I want to make, yeah? So I've been researching and researching. And then one day I receive an email from this person, yeah? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, anyway. Um, it sounded like a really subject that I really wanted uh, to, to kind of learn more about. And so I said, yeah, let's, you know, uh, let's meet. And I say that when I started, I was like, okay, this is, could just be another research for my fiction film. And then like, you know, and then we move back. Cause I really believe that this is gonna take like a year and we're gonna be finished. But after we went and did the first interview, it was just like, I had never had anything like that. Everything that I'd been taught in school was just like, like it was not the truth. Like, and so it was like, we just knew at that moment, like we didn't even have to say it. We looked at each other and we knew that we had to make this film because it was just like some raw information that had never been spoken of and that people now felt that they could speak about. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's the short of the story. Yeah. 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 Well, I think um, the reason that we are, uh, kind of we ask like, how did you come to this story? Um, it's, uh, it's very important to funders. Uh, to understand who's making the film and um, and why why are they the you know the right person uh, and what effect will you know what what are they bringing to the process um, and what effect will it have on the community uh, that they're participating in that they're filming um, and also what's interesting because as you say these things out loud. Uh, we're going to go to your application. And I think just in the grant writing process, uh, something I want to emphasize is that I think a lot of us are taught that you just go to your pen and paper and you start writing. But I think in the relationship you've built, so much it is, is a team uh, and there is the back and forth. And I think often saying your story out loud, uh, how we write and how we speak is sometimes helps us inform our writing. So I, I love that you're able to to share oral storytelling, and I think it does in, inform your writing. So I kind of pass that along as others try to shape their proposals. Um, don't forget that writing and talking about it is such is so influential in in describing that. Um, so yeah, if, I, if I could just say, Dan, I just wanted to add that you know before um before I met Zippy. Um, I, 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 kind of, I kind of saw myself as the director of the project, but I think once I met her and, you know, just, just, you know, just our, our meeting and then our first experience, it was clear, very clear right at the beginning that this had to be a collaboration for me and that we would, we would co-direct it. Um, and that was huge for me because there's no way I could have done this on my own. And I think I was just super lucky to just have you know, have Zippy walk into, you know, this this project and be so open to it. Um, but I think that collaboration is just um, continues to be key. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, and I want to hear more about the specifics of collaboration. Um, as Zippy, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I mean, for me, um, you know, I came from a background where like there was not a lot of, you know like documentary features being made in Kenya. And so when I started, that's why I was like, oh yeah, that's just a one year and you know, we're gonna go. But Mina like, you know, came with a totally different experience. You know, she'd been doing this, um, she, she'd been, um, yeah, she'd, she'd been dreaming, she'd been doing, she'd been traveling, yeah. So for me, I'd just come from film school and I knew that I wanted to, to, to do, a, you know, to make a story from home, yeah. And so I believe that um, with a lot of experience from like, what she had she was bringing and I um it was good to have like the story yeah and I think the strongest point for us was kind of figuring out, out our, our strong points you know Mina was very good in writing and then I started doing the technical things because at the beginning we actually had no money you know so it was like yeah I'm gonna shoot we're gonna edit Mina's gonna write so um it, it was just finding like the midpoint of how do you work together and how do you use um, each other's strong points to actually make the film work? Um, yes. That's a beautiful segue into, uh, so you, you, you go out with the skills you have and, and those hopefully um, uh, complement 
each other. Uh, if what was your, to put it bluntly, what was your financing plan? What was your funding plan? Or when did you write the first grant? I mean, and I, we, we're kind of approaching this film chronologically, even though we have a small amount of time. Uh, so, you know, you've given us kind of that huge research development stage. You've shot the first interview. There's a story, very key. What is the story? We all see the story. So then how does the grant writing evolve for you in this project? Um, well, you know, you know, went in completely not thinking about that. Um, so, but, you know, I, I mean, I funded my trip to Kenya um, and, you know, I had a camera, Zippy had a camera, I had, you know, two Sennheiser wireless mics and, um, um, and I, I had set aside, a, you know, a, a very small budget to say, okay, if we need crew, we can pay at least a camera person and this and that. Um, and, um, but I, I, I didn't really think beyond that until we got our first interviews, which, as if he said, were, were just so, you know, they were research interviews, but we've ended up using them a lot in, in you know, we, we will end up using a lot of them in the film. Um, and I think just the power of those first interviews, um, I just sort of, um, I'd been out of filmmaking for a number of years, um, swearing I would never get back into documentaries. Um, but I think the, the power of the story moved me and I just looked up all these grants and just, just started writing. I, I, we didn't have a plan at all. Um, it was just like, okay, we just need this much money to get this much done and then we'll see what happens. And um, so that started, um, you know, pretty much right after we shot, which was back in October 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and there were some deadlines coming up and um, we, you know, just just I don't know how we just managed to put like, you know, a five minute visual teaser, which Zippy like worked on and did the, the, the editing herself and I was doing the writing and I don't know how we hammered out a budget. <laughs> that was very rudimentary, but it was specifically for development funds which made it a bit less, you know, unwieldy. Right. Um, and it was also um, the, the funding um, um, foundations were um, geared towards films from Africa, the Middle East, you know, South America, mm -hmm. um, basically the global South, but they were specifically looking for films from there. Um, and that's where we got our first, first monies, um, which yep. were development funds. Um, yeah. Can you can you speak to so uh, I want to speak to some of the yeses and the nos that are involved in these processes. But um, where does where does that first um, we, we had talked about like um, once you start getting support um, and the writing uh, is shaping, uh, how did the story shift in terms of of what you thought you were creating and and the feedback that you got? Um, from some of these supporters as, um, uh, yeah, I, I wanna speak to some of them were kind of like workshops and funding. So how did the story shift uh, as you wrote about it and as you approached it? I mean, I, I'll, I'll jump in really fast. I think, I think when we started, when we first showed our first teaser that we were so proud of, <laughs> um, and you know, it was basically, you know, it was a lot of interviews, you know, it was a lot of interviews. And, and we love this interview and we still love them a lot. But everyone kept saying, like, but who's your main character? Who's, you know, who is telling the story? Like, so all, all the basic stuff that we really have to, we had to start thinking about, yeah? And then um, we, what we knew from the beginning is that we wanted to tell a story from the point of view of the Kenyans, a story that's never been told. Yeah, because a lot of stories had been told from, you know, fr from, from the West and coming in. And so we knew, like, whatever we decided to do, we would do it, um, from the point of view of the Kenyans. But also even like before then we were thinking, oh, we're gonna make an experimental film like with theater, you know, cause we are both like from fiction and experimental. So it came from far. But as we went along, uh, I think we first, our, our first uh, development workshop was at IDFA. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they really were like, I think you have your main character right there because we've been filming with Wanjugu, but as our fixer, but she, we got access everywhere. We went everywhere, but she had the story. She was like the person, you know, driving, like she was the daughter of the person who wanted to sit. So yeah, so slowly it just kind of 
started falling into place. We had lots of conversations with Mina. We're like, oh my gosh, will she really? But I'm telling you, like once we first, uh, the first place we went and put her and, and it was like a really intense scene, I remember. She was so great and we're like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. So that really shifted how we, like our style, how we told the story and, you know, the character. Uh, yeah, so it was, Mina, I'll let you jump in if I forgot anything. Yeah, and to add to that, I mean, if you wanted to, I think a lot of filmmakers uh, that are approaching documentary, how do you write about a story if you, if it's evolved, like how do you write a story that hasn't happened, you know, for, for, the, for the short answer of it? Um, I mean, as you presented in your log line and, and you've, once you've focused on your main character, you know that she is on a journey to find where her father uh, is buried but then what else, how do you write a proposal to say what else, so what else, you know, what is the conflict, what are the obstacles that maybe you don't even know yet, so how do you do that? Yeah, that was really, really hard, I think, was knowing, um, you know, initially our film started out wanting to just be an expose of British, this, this buried history of what the British had done that, that was, that was, you know, intentionally suppressed at all levels, right, it was, you know, omitted from the educational system. Um, there was, it was just a, it was literally buried underground, you know, the, the, the history. And so we, we had to really struggle with, um, you know, once, once we decided, okay, Wanjugu is our main character and she is the daughter of Dedan Kimathi, who again was the leader of the independence movement, um, we, you know, we were like, well, her journey's uncovering this history and that's, that's it. But everyone said, no, no, you have to, you know, just think about it more deeply and really what is her journey? And so that's when um, I think, you know, her journey at that time was looking for her father's remains, which um, are still, you know, they, they, they um, basically when the British executed Kimathi, um, they did something with his body, nobody knows what they did. And so for the family, um, this is enormous, right? They haven't been able <clears throat> to give him a pro proper send off. And since he was the leader of this movement, it's not just personal family, it's the greater, you know, it's, it's the entire country really, um, or those who supported, you know, what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was her true search. And so that's how we started to sort of follow her um, but that that was the story. But then as time went on and as we got a lot of rejections, <laughs> more time went on, um, um, the, the story changed, her story changed. So we, we were trying to, you know, at first I think we were sort of like, oh, but you have to keep following that journey because that's what, our, that's what we've written in our proposal, mm -hmm. right? But she's a powerhouse and she got involved in other stuff and her journey transmuted into being one of helping the freedom fighters now. And that was, okay, yes, they want to find Kimathi's graves. They want to find the graves of their loved ones who were disappeared as well. Right. But it became a more immediate task of, of fighting for land, mm -hmm. you know, for fighting for something they could, they could really um, use and that would help them survive. So sorry, in the writing, we kind of, I guess you just have to kind of extrapolate what your, what, you know, what your character, if you're following a character or what your story is trying to. That's right. The film that you're trying to make. Yeah, the yeah. film that you're trying to make. Um, and know that that's not going to be fixed in stone. And I think that hopefully funders won't know that it's not fixed in stone either. You know. That's right that it's gonna change, it should change. Um, you know, it depends what type of film you're making, but <clears throat> if it is kind of this, this character's journey, then yeah, you've just gotta go with what you have at the time, extrapolate from that, and then, and then um, you know, and then keep, keep revising it, basically. That's, that's what we did throughout. Um, yeah. but, but weirdly also, I mean, a lot of, not a lot, but some of what we wrote in our initial proposals which we thought would never happen, they started to happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? and, that, and life actually started to unfold like that. So that was kind of an interesting thing as well. I think a lot of times it's helpful we see in applications that filmmakers pose questions to the, to yeah. the, in the proposal, to us, the reviewer and to themselves. Like, um, you know, 
will she find her, uh, her father's remains? Will land be restored to uh, those it was taken from? I mean, those are questions, those are conflicts, those are story elements. Uh, and just acknowledging that you're asking those questions gives us, gives the reviewer uh, a chance to, to fill in the gaps uh, and to show that you do have a path to a story um, versus a topic. Um, which is something that we often see as filmmakers get so um, focused on the theme of uh, uh, their, their story versus the story. Um, and so that's something we'll, we're going to post uh, soon about how to navigate that, you know, like you have each other and you're, you're also getting feedback from funders. Um, uh, can you talk briefly about uh, the, the rejections and the, the mental uh, and the timeline. Uh, so it's kind of twofold when we talked about this. Uh, you have a period where you do get a few grants and a few um, supports and workshops and pitch forums, which are all part of the fundraising. It's not just grants. It can be private investment. It can be uh, uh, supportive organizations for the cause. But there's a stretch where you said there was no funding but the character and the story was still, still evolving. So I guess I'm, I'm speaking to how do filmmakers navigate when you know, funders receive a thousand applications and 10, only 10 films are, are funded? How do you navigate personally that, that sort of rejection? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just do it really quickly, but Mina is the good way with the timelines. But like, yeah, I mean, there's a time you were like, yay, you know, it was like, you know, I, at first it was like a lot of yeses and like, a, you know, we, we kind of, uh, we were on a roll. And then at one point, like there was nothing. It was like for, you know, a year, two years, just nothing. But I think what really helped us is that, you know, our character kept pushing us, you know, the story was unfolding and we had to follow that. And, you know, the good thing is that we, we, we were able to, we have a, first of all, we have to have a really good team that really like believe in your story and when you call them, even if you don't have any money, they'll show up, yeah? And so that's, I think, what really worked for our film because we have a really good, great team in Kenya, uh, you know, Mina, or even if we're not there, like, you know, uh, like really strong connections with the character. So that really helped us when we didn't have the money, yeah? So we kind of kept going, you know, our character didn't stop. And, and I think when we didn't have the money, that's when a lot of the stories, things have started happening. And Mina and I were always like, oh my gosh, are we missing, a, you know, but we've tried, we always try to like play catch up. And so I'll let Mina kind of go to the timelines of when like, you know, what we applied for, what we didn't get, what, you know, and how kind of it's all coming together now at the very last minute, I think. Um, yeah, no, I think, I mean, we're still getting a lot of rejections. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but yeah, we, we kind of had an initial boost during development and research. And we were invited to a bunch of workshops that really helped help make connections and help get in invitations to other granting agencies. Um, again, the ones we got, the funds we got were actually were ones that were directed to wanting films from from you know Africa, right, and the Middle East, and you know, um, it's been very hard for us with the U.S. Um, and with Europe actually. Um, well, Europe had the targeted funds for African films, um, so that that was um, IDFA and Hot Docs in Canada. Um, they, they have funds directed towards Africa. Um, in the US, it was, it was super hard. And actually IDA was the first in with, with the Enterprise Development Fund. And we were just floored that you, that you responded to us. It was just so like, it was such an affirmation and such a, um, um, you know, it was just huge in moving our project forward as well because it was a good chunk of development money. You know, at $15,000 that could go really far in Kenya, um, and um, um, I, th I think um, you know, I think what has um, given us a boost um, during this last year is actually, you know, our sub subject matter is not one that people really people is not one that maybe broadcasters, European or American broadcasters, feel close to. I mean, it's not a particularly happy story it's it's looking for accountability and it's you know political and it's this and that and historic you know looking for historical accountability which is not a 
you know, it's it's not like a, a sexy subject in a way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say that. But I think um, I think this year we've actually been, you know, in a way it was the zeitgeist. It was the Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S. Mm-hmm. that that really um, I think has had such an impact the world over. And people, you know, and funders started looking at colonialism differently. That's right. Um, and I think that has really helped our project in that, okay, we've done all the work. We've done four or five years of research and filming and that, you know. Um, and then, you know, when this moment came, um, um, we were ready and we could present our project as being kind of, um, you know, the, the, the issues of colonialism and white supremacy are directly, you know, addressed in our film. Right. And so that, so in a way, you know, it's also timing. It's like, yeah, um, sure. you know, funders are interested in different topics at different times. That's and right. we, they were not interested four years ago and now they are. And so we've, you know, we've kind of lucked out. So I guess the, the thing is, is that even if you do get just rejected, just know that your time will come, you know, <laughs> and, or you, or you create that time, That's you know, right. you create it so that, um, people will have to pay attention, you know, so not, not just, I guess the, the, the thing is to just not take it personally and just keep going. I mean, it took four tries to get chicken and egg and, and I was really demoralized that we didn't get it, but we got it this year after four, four years of trying, you know, um, and there's other funds we still haven't gotten. So, you know, it's just a question of powering through and making it work somehow. That's right. I want to be mindful of the time. My colleagues are. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just jumping be, really quickly. Um, no, no. I just wanted to say, and also for our film, just um, because everything delayed because we didn't have the money. Like the story kind of shaped itself, and like it was the right time. You know, I, I really believe, like for us, it was just like the time made the story like keep going. Because, like as Mina said, but like trying to make a story what what we had thought in our heads but like the time allowed for the character to grow and the car and the story to develop and now i think it's it's what it is now which is you know which is really good so rich um thank you zippy thank you mina uh, i always promise to share the application but so, so i think because we, we talk about these um uh, uh big ideas and and how you've navigated it but i want to take the time and then we're going to go to the q a i know this could be a half day session. Um, so thank you for your questions. We're going to get to those shortly. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen very quickly, just because I think writing um, about story and topic uh, for us as funders, we often encourage people to, to look at it through context, clarity, and the vision and authorship that you bring to it as a filmmaker. Um, what is context? Uh, these uh, filmmakers have already, you know, verbalized what they were uh, investigating and what the story was as a as a on a larger level. Uh, and this is actual excerpts from their application. Normally, I would have the filmmakers read it out loud because I do think it's very important that writing um, is is said out loud. It will help you, it will expose things that are clunky or uh, confusing as you're, as you're writing. But I, I think that this is so key to show, uh, ooh, sorry, to show the writing uh, and styles are gonna be different uh, and language is different. And we, we appreciate that as funders. We know that sometimes English is not the first language for an applicant. And as long as you're giving us context to that, we uh, can navigate that with you. So here they've given us this global story um, that feels very big and very epic. So how are they bringing clarity to this, this theme and this topic? Um, and this is where they describe uh, Wanjigu, which is their main character. Uh, she's an airport customer care representative. She's married to a comedian. She has three children and she has a special inheritance. Uh, and we are identifying her father. He was the leader of the Kenyan independence. So we're finding this bigger story just got smaller. We just, we now have, um, we now have our entry point to, to this topic and to this larger story. And so the film is promising to tell the story of Wanjigu's journey as she learns of the camps, the graves. Uh, and in addition to that, it is a personal mission 
for her. Um, this buried history of British colonial atrocities, their continuing impacts today. So we're weaving, we can see as reviewers, we have this history, but it's not just a historical film. We're very much in the present with her. And the last thing I wanna uh, specify is, this is also from their application. Why are they making this film? What's gonna make them wake up every day when they ha may have an inbox full of rejections? Our motivation stems from the belief that Kenyans should author their own history. We were both born in independent Kenya, but at school we were taught a British history, still taught today that why washes their policies and omits Kenyan perspective. Uh, I had a lot of slides. I wanted, to, I wanted this to be a three hour session. Um, they talk about in their application, there have been other uh, westernized versions of this story with lots of, uh, <laughs> with lots of talking heads and experts, but this is gonna come from the Kenyan experience. And that's what made this story um, exceptional to us as funders, uh, that we saw uh, maybe a story that had been told, but not this way. And for many ways, it actually hadn't been told <laughs> that, that there was a, a history that had not been written. And we were excited to support this film. Um, we're going to go into the questions now, but one thing I want to leave you with as we, before we get to your questions, are some of the takeaways um, that maybe we weren't even able to fully explore in this short, short time. <sighs> no matter what application you're writing, whether it's to IDA or to anyone, first ask yourself, do I meet the guidelines? Criteria, I know it's so hard to navigate. There's hundreds and hundreds of different funders and they all have different criteria. But be thoughtful, and if you're not sure, email, try to email the funder and ask them. We say, if you think you meet the criteria, apply. That's what we say, if you're not able to reach a funder. Ask yourself, are the story and characters clear? <laughs> Can I clearly explain what the story is? Uh, is the writing in my voice, or is it too formal? This is something that we often encourage um, filmmakers to do is to, to say it out loud and then to, to write. Um, oftentimes we're programmed from academia if we've gone that path that um, maybe we've been, been influenced by what we think is you know, a, a term paper or you know, this is how I'm supposed to write. So finding that voice is just as important as, as your filmmaking voice. And then um, have I used visual storytelling? You know, am I able to describe scenes that are in the film that if, if once I have my glorious work sample, which is a whole other workshop, um, but if I don't have that yet and I'm in development, how can I describe visually the, the film that I'm making? And so here are a few things to, to, to think about as you define how to do that. I'm gonna create this new word, a, 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 a doodad. Use your doodad. <laughs> Describe the story out loud, which we've done here today. Use short, active sentences. Describe visual scenes. If you were at a, a restaurant or bar or maybe you're someone's backyard, uh, how would you describe that scene? Say it out loud. Um, what's the weather like? What are the sounds like? What are Use all of your senses uh, in writing so you can really get the feel if you don't have that visual sample yet. Please ask others to read it. Those, those folks will help you find what is missing and what's confusing and what, um, what can make your application stronger. We're just humans on this side of it. Um, so send it to someone who doesn't even know your story uh, because we don't. We're coming at it cold when we read an application. Last but not least, please don't procrastinate. <laughs> So on that note, excellent, uh, excellent advice. Like, okay, yeah, yeah and I would amazing. Yeah, I would yeah. love for y'all to offer any other um, things we didn't get to. I wanted to say too, like don't write like an advertisement. You know, be authentic in that. You know, you're not you're you're telling us a story. You're not selling something. I think we're also very much influenced by advertising. And this website, if you want to, we have it in the chat. But if you want to um, support the film in other ways, you can go to the website. So I have the daunting task of um, going through uh, all of these wonderful questions that we've received. And um, I have my colleagues on the other end that are, um, that are helping me. So I'm gonna start with, oh my goodness, uh, let's see. Well, we were talking about work sample. Um, 
I read in the chat that this trailer does not depict the style of the film. How did you choose how to represent the film? What went into the choice of creating a trailer uh, that does not represent the style, maybe of the feature is what they're saying. This is something I'm struggling with when making a sample. Um, so before you answer that, I do wanna say like for a lot of funders, they require, we require like 10 to 20 minute uh, work samples because we wanna see the characters. We wanna really sit with the content and, and your style and your approach. So um, Zippy, I know you were editing a lot of the emerging samples along the way. So do you wanna talk about how, your, how this trailer emerged maybe outside of your longer sample? Yes, I mean, this, exactly, like we'd been shooting, like, but then we'd never really sat down to edit. And we knew we had to have a, to, you know, to, to have a sample and we, we were just the two of us for many, for many years, four years, it was just me and I. And so, you know, the, the great, we, 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 we knew that, like, um, how do we divide the work? Yeah, so editing. So the first thing was just like instinct, it's like, what's the story yeah at that point we didn't weren't thinking about like the style or whatever because actually the stuff that we shot a lot of it was from from the research yeah and so putting it together was just like instinct it's like what's the story how do we put it how do we if someone watches something five minutes will they understand it i think for us that was like the first thing just clarity and then after that of course for all fundings was very different and, and then, you know, um, it was like some wanted 10 minutes, some 20, you know, so it was always like a really daunting process. And Mina, I like, you know, at some point, Mina started editing. We all had, it was just like all hands on deck. Um, <laughs> but I think what really helped us was we knew kind of the story that we wanted to tell, the context that we wanted people to understand. And that really helped us, even though it was not the style that we of the film, but it was always that, how does someone understand? You know, at one point, we started putting text, at one point it's like, okay, we do story. And then like what helped also was like some fans that wanted longer scenes, we were able to kind of show them the characters, like show them a, a, you know, a bit of breathing. And it's been really a process. Even today, like, you know, we, we, like last year we hired someone to like, you know, to, 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 to cut something and it's always different. And we are always laughing with Mina. It's like everything you cut will be, it can be told in so many different ways. But I think that the essence is that what's your story and how, how you know for anyone can they understand it and then you start playing with the visual style and and the you know which we're still developing even at this time uh, when we're starting the edit yeah and, and, and we i mean this the two minute that you just showed um was actually done for info forum uh where we needed a two minute teaser um and and we are produced we we finally got a producer last year um mm -hmm. who's brazilian um she got this hotshot Brazilian trailer editor who normally does fiction films um, to take from our ten, longer 10 minute sample because right. we couldn't send him all the footage at that point. Right. Um, and he, took, he just downloaded our cut 10 minute sample and made this two minute out of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so hard to see that sometimes because I think what the question is going back to is that you already are starting to see that longer the feature version of it. So sometimes, once again, just like the written proposal, it's nice to have those outside eyes that can really yeah. see and, and cut from that uh, if you have the resources, because we know, yeah, hiring an outside editor is, is, is sometimes a luxury. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the pre-interviews, and that's actually one of the questions. Um, when you are going into what you know this, this entry point, can you talk to um, folks about your, your process of doing a pre-interview, which you think was just going to be a research interview, but is now, you said, maybe cornerstones into the, the foundation of the film. Um, I'm going to, I see both of you shaking your heads. So who wants to jump in? <laughs> Mina, Zip, Zippy, Zippy, yeah, you had to form the trailer. So maybe, or the, the work samples. So tell me about how those interviews have, how did you approach them and, and how have they, how have they worked? Yeah. I mean, exactly. So we had just met with Mina. So it was like, we're just going to do the interviews. Yeah. So good thing, you know, we took a, you know, good cameraman and we had like good sound. And then, yeah, basically sit down interview, like let's ask the questions. Yeah. And for me, I, I think that's like gold. Like I think the first like three days of interviews, pre-interviews that we did, we literally like 
everyone would stop the camera everyone would cry like mother daughter friend everyone who was there it was just like so powerful and i believe like i think in every degree like your first instinct is always just like the right one it was just like so strong and then we continued like for the for the next like three i think three or four uh, research uh, shoot days we continued with the same interviews but everything was just so raw so you know like because just a little background because it was actually banned to speak about the subject in Kenya. It was banned. It was like only like a few years ago where the ban was lifted and we were, people were allowed to speak. And also with now the evidence of like, this is what the British did. And people were actually, I'm not gonna be arrested if I speak about it. And so for us, yeah, that, that, that really helped us. Um, yeah, to just kind of get the very raw interview. So the process was, we recorded everything and we recorded in high resolution that we knew even if we wanted to ever go back, we would still use it. So I would just say that, you know, go like you're actually starting to make the film. It's like, even if it's your research, you're, you've started making the film with or without money, just make it, talk to your friend. <laughs> We've got friends and then they'll help you with a good camera, good sound. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how we approached the first bit of interviews at the end of 2015. That's right. Um, as we approach the, the kind of the hour mark, my, my, my production team said we would like to stay on for five more minutes. Mina Zippy, are you able to stay for five more minutes? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, and if anyone needs to leave, uh, but we're going to, we're going to go a little past 11 Pacific time. Um, so thank you all. And it'll be a available recording if you have to leave. Uh, let's talk about budget. Uh, this has come up a few questions in different in different forms. Um, grantors ask for different types of budgets. Sometimes they only want a budget that uh, is for the grant. Maybe it's a fifteen thousand dollar grant for the development grant we we had for Enterprise. We only needed to see, hey, we know it's early. How would you spend this fifteen k? Um, for me, as a I, my best kind of grant. That's the best kind of requirement. <laughs> then there are these um, uh, these folks. We also do uh, give us your whole line item. You know, it's you're making a feature. How how much is it going to cost? And and um, and this is what I'll say from the funding side of it. Before I I toss it to y'all, um, you know, we we know that a budget tells a story. Uh, and and uh, also when you're applying to grants at different stages. Uh, I think uh, I want to quote um, Darisha Kai, who's one of our grantees, who's making a fabulous film, Mama Bears. Darisha said, you're in whatever stage the grant is asking for. Um, <laughs> and you can write the, 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 the proposal to fit that, um, which I agree, things are gray in terms of, of phases. Um, but your budget is, is that story. I mean, what we're looking for is if, I'm, if you're shooting a film in Kenya, there's going to be travel involved. There's going to be um, different elements of production involved. Is there safety? Is there security being considered? Um, if you're writing about those things in the proposal, the budget should reflect that. Um, maybe my colleagues can post uh, a link we have for kind of navigating budgets because we want you to pay yourself. That's the other thing we want you to see. We want to see that you're paying yourself. Um, and so anyway, so folks are asking like, how, how did, this is speaking from a funder side of things. As a filmmaker, how would you, any advice for approaching budgets? <laughs> um, you know, 40. <laughs> you no, know, not at all, so not. Um, but <laughs> um, I, I think, um, you know, the advice I'd give is is just be as truthful as you can possibly be. Cause I, I, I we, you know, I wasn't, and we weren't um, initially um, where I, I was, you know, I think, um, we had vague ideas of things and we would both research, okay, what will this cost? What will this cost? But it was really, um, you know, especially in our earlier budgets, it was, it was really um, kind of very general. And they, they, they were based on real numbers, but we didn't, you know, we didn't go all out to really research the numbers. Um, our, you know, as we got more into the film, it became clear that, oh, this isn't just an exercise that, that funders want to know. This, this is really how the film gets made, right? So it took, it took us a bit of a while to, to, to actually connect this, abstract, this sort of 
pie in the sky budget with, oh, actually, we really need this money, you know. Right. Um, so I, I would just say do the really do the research, really find out what things cost, um, really estimate time. That's very difficult is is estimating, you know, how long are you going to need a DP for? How long are you going to need? This, you know, but just try and just do your research and, and really be truthful and also take in, I mean, we really cut corners and we shouldn't have, but things like, you know, insurance. I mean, in Kenya, you know, that's a tough thing to find, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, an insurance for a documentary. Mm -hmm. um, permits, um, you know, legal fees, all of that, just factor it in as soon as you can. And of course, paying yourself, which we didn't do till a long, you know, we're, we're, we're still catching up on that. But um, I think, yeah, the, the main thing is is honesty and, and research and really, um, really, really take, really be micro about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you can always scale back, but it's it's really good to know what things are gonna cost because otherwise you, you kind of get pinched later, right? So now we're sort of playing catch up with all these things we've, for, you know, didn't consider. And now it's like, oh, we really need to consider this, right? So right. I don't know if we have the model budget at all, but. <laughs> well, there there is no model budget in some regard because everything is different. So that's why it's hard to say there's templates and there's averages and, and, and things of that sort because the circumstances can always be so um, different. Um, as we approach that bonus five minutes, I wanna, I wanna give space to any parting thoughts, things that you want to leave with this group um, that uh, we didn't cover? Um, whoever wants to go first, any advice for navigating I, grants or fundraising? Zippy? I, I'll be really quick. Um, yeah, I, I really think it's, it's just finding the right partners and believing in your project and like just bouncing it off each other and, and people that you trust um you know a good thing in a long time in kenya we didn't have any feel like there was no you know sort of sort of like a, a, a you know a documentary community but like now we have docu books so there's quite a few people you can bounce off your ideas and so i would say you know for me like mina has been there from the beginning and then we have a few people that we trust we would send off our you know it's been quite a journey but i really believe in the best choosing just getting the best collaborators and, and people in a circle of trust. Um, for me, that's been my biggest win uh, for this project. Great, thank you. Mina, any parting thoughts? Um, yeah, I just, I just really want to just really encourage people and don't, don't be put off by rejections. Um, just know there's so many factors that go into um, you know, getting accepted or not. And that includes personal, the personal whim of the reviewers. Um, the time, you know, the zeitgeist sort of time um, that there's, there's just so many unpredictable elements. So just don't take it personally if you do get a rejection and just just keep going. Just, you know, um, your story's worth it. You've given it all this time and effort and love and, you know, building a community and just keep at it because because uh, that's that's what will see it through. So um, just want to wish everybody luck and and perseverance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're not alone. Uh, this chat and this group that showed up today is, um, you know, one of the things that uh, the pandemic gave to us is the accessibility of, of, of the internet in ways that we had maybe taken for granted. Um, so in, in as big as IDA sounds, we, we promise that we are still here, but we also really look to the regional support that different uh, areas offer. So I would encourage you to look close to home first, whether that's within your city, your state, uh, your region. Uh, there's some wonderful uh, resources that can be had in that community. And then here at IDA, you please join IDA and you can become a part of the membership in the community that IDA is trying to foster. Um, so today I want to thank uh, Mina and Zippy. You're getting a lot of love in the chat. I know we haven't been able to look at it very closely, but folks are loving how vulnerable and transparent you're being. And so, so much is needed in this community because we often feel like it's so isolated and competitive. The grants have that feeling and, and because of resources. So thank you for sharing today. Um, I want to thank you. 
thank you so much for having us. And, you know, really thank you to IDA for supporting us and being such great funders with moral support as well as, as funding. So that goes yeah, a long way. That goes a long way. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. And it's not just me. Thankfully, I'm not the only, like I said, you're not seeing so many people today. We have uh, a host of reviewers and I want to thank my colleague, Kenny Brown, our grants coordinator, uh, our new director of funding, Pro C. Tang, and then my other ID co IDA colleagues, Leanne, Nikki, Cassidy, for your support today and Mara. Let's give it up for Mara. Thank you, Mara. <laughs> and Tina, who did our closed captioning today. It takes a village. And on that note, um, be well, be safe, and we will see you on the road or in these boxes. So thank you all. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.